On this video, we will be repairing a Samsung SyncMaster 225BW with a failing power supply. Uh, the typical symptom of a failing power supply <clears throat> will be either no power at all to the unit or just a blinking power light and no display. That's the typical uh, problem shown on these monitors. Um, to do that, we'll lay the monitor down flat. Have to remove the stand. We remove these screws. Then you can remove the three screws across the bottom of the unit. Now, with those three screws removed, put the unit back on its back. If you gently lift up the bezel, it will start separating from the back. You just do this as you work your way around. The little plastic catches will release. And then we need to lay the monitor back over and the back comes off. The power supply board will be inside, so we will need to take off the shielding, unplug the backlights, unplug the control panel, then we can lift this assembly up and rotate it to the side to get to the power supply board. We'll be undoing the screws. And removing the board from the chassis. Uh, it will need to be unplugged from the display logic board. And here we have the power supply that has failed. Um, typical way to notice to, to Verify this is the capacitor tops will be swollen. As you can see on these, the tops should be perfectly flat. And on these five capacitors, they're quite visibly bulged. And some of them, in fact, have part of the chemical solution leaking out onto the top of the capacitor. So now we'll go over to the soldering station and desolder these capacitors and replace them with uh, new capacitors, and the unit will be back up and operational. Okay, now we're ready to do the repair on the power supply board. We will be replacing three of the 320 microfarad capacitors and two 820 microfarad capacitors. Uh, basically, you take your soldering iron, you heat up one leg of the capacitor, you pull it through the board, you go to the next leg, you melt the solder and pull that leg through, and then you have the capacitor off the board. Uh, go to the next capacitor, heat the leg, heat the leg. I'm oh, pulling it off the... There we have it. Um, same thing for the remaining three capacitors. You heat the leg, pull it through, heat the other leg, pull that one through. go through till all five capacitors are pulled from the board. Uh, at this point we don't need to worry about the excess solder that is on the board. We will be cleaning that up with our desolder wick in a few moments. Um, okay, now we have the capacitors off the board. Any remaining solder can be cleaned up with your solder wick. You just put it on the board, put your soldering iron on top of it. It will melt the solder and then the solder will be absorbed back into the wick. You can kind of watch it um, go up into the wick. Once we finish, we have a nice clean um, solder hole to mount the new capacitors into. Um, you may not have to clean up all of the holes on the board. Some of them, when you pull the capacitor out, might have uh, removed all the excess solder as it was. Just about finished. Alright, now we have all the excess solder. Now it's time to put the new capacitors onto the board. 
One side of the capacitor has a gray stripe. That is the negative side. It will go on the board onto the shaded side. So we just insert it in. You bend the leads to hold the capacitor in until we go to the next one. And we proceed till we have all five put in. Once you have all five capacitors inserted into the board, then we do a quick solder with our soldering iron in lead-free solder. Just hold the soldering iron on each leg till it heats. Touch the solder to the solder connection. Make a clean solder joint. doesn't take much solder just to make sure that it's good and shiny. If the solder joint when you're finished has a dull look to it, that is what is called a cold solder joint. It's a bad solder joint. Uh, you need to apply a little more solder and make sure that it's nice and shiny solder joint. Okay, there's all of our solder connections. Now I take your tin snips, your little die cutters or cross cut cutters, cut off the little legs. And now we have a fully repaired power supply board. Let's go back to the machine, put it in, see how it works. Okay, here we are back, ready to remount our power supply board in the monitor. First, you'll want to hook up the power supply cord to the logic controller board. Then we will insert our power supply board back in. Put our little shield bracket back in. Put our screws back in to hold it in place. Rotate it back around. Set it where it belongs. Plug our backlight bulbs back in. There's a pink and a blue connector. It does not matter which one is on which end of the socket. They're both identical bulbs, and it's both identical output voltages, so it doesn't matter which one is on the left or which one is on the right. Uh, on the other end now, we'll plug in our control board. And now we're ready to put the back back on. It will just snap back into place. Put our three screws back across the bottom. Put our stand back on the monitor. our VGA.
and we have a working monitor. Whereas before, all we had was a blinking power light. Now we have a fully functional monitor. Um, this is the typical problem on these monitors. This is the same power supply board that goes into the Samsung 214Ts. Um, very same problem on many video monitors uh, is the power supply going out due to failing capacitors. Um, power supply kit repair kits for this model and other models are available at our website. Um, information will be shown right on the screen in just one moment.